Hello, this is the demo for the Windows 365 integration. So to begin, we go to the Astro console or the UI for Horizon. And you can see here that I'm already on the integration setting. And so here you want to select the Windows 365 tab. And if you don't see it, then you can reach out to Ops to enable it. So I'll click Manage. And here I'll have to connect as a global administrator. So this already assumes that you set up your IDP actually. So if you go to the IDP access here, you can see that I've already connected in uh, Microsoft Azure IDP, which is the only IDP supported at the moment for this Windows 365 integration. And so you can only connect one tenant and that tenant uh, has to contain all the VMs that you want on board on the Microsoft licensing side. And so if you go back to the integrations and to Windows 365, you can now onboard Windows 365, assuming you've done the IDP, which is a requirement in general for Horizon. So to onboard Windows 365, you have to have the global administrator uh, ideally, um, the same global administrator that you use to onboard the IDP, just to ensure you have the correct permissions. So you can connect here, and I'll log on as the global administrator, and it'll ask me if they can read the cloud PCs. So this is the integration uh, to manage the, uh, the installation of the Horizon agents onto your cloud PCs. So you'll have to sign in as a global administrator, and after that, it'll request that you wait a couple seconds for you to uh, see that if the integration is seen or not, you'll see a banner at the top of there's a failure. Most failures are caused by an issue on the mempool side or the Intune administrator sensor. So before you do that integration, uh, as documented in the docs, you have to go to the um, home tenant administration, the uh, connectors and tokens, and uh, then the Windows 365 partner connectors, and you can see that I've already added a missile here. So you need to add a missile first before you do this on board. You know, you'll go back an error in saying that you know this uh, tenant is not provision if uh, you try to um, go through this onboarding without that first. But in this case, it succeeded because I already had all the connectors set up. And uh, here we have the default agent features that will be installed on the Horizon agents. So I'll just leave them as default for now. And we're ready to look at the capacity. So I've already onboarded a Horizon Azure Edge and, and UAG. And so this is the same as the regular Horizon workflow for the Azure Edge and UAG. So you'll create the Azure Edge, create the Azure and UAG as you normally would. And then afterwards, oh, one thing to know about the Azure Edge though is that uh, currently SSO is not supported for Windows 365 integration. That is a uh, follow-up feature that we are um, implementing in these coming uh, months. So the Horizon Edge is of type Microsoft Azure. So when you add the capacity, make sure you add the Microsoft Azure capacity here. And after you add the capacity and you create your Edge and your UAG, then you can go to the providers and add a new provider for Windows 365. And you'll want to create one of these Windows 365 providers per Edge. So I'll call this one the West US2 Windows 365 provider. And since I only have one provider of Azure type to select, I'll select this. And so what this is going to do is it's going to create a mapping between your Windows 365 provider and an Azure UAG and Edge so that this Azure UAG and Edge is used to broker to the Windows 365 VMs. So in this case, I created this provider and it's going to uh, map to this Azure provider. And this Azure provider's Edge and UAG will now be used when we create templates or pools out of this Windows 365 provider. So it'll notice it tells you the region, by the way. So I'll add this to a pool now. I'll create this pool. I'll call it Windows 365 pool. Okay. And so VMs onboarded to this pool will be using the edge that the provider is associated with. So it, it already filled it in here. You uh, have only one site here. Uh, but if you had multiple sites, you can select any site you want. And if, as long as it has a provider with an edge and a Windows 365 provider created tied to that, then it'll also tell you what region this pool is going to be considered because the edges region is what's being populated here. So after you create the pool, you want to configure what VMs you want to be put into that pool. So here you'll see that actually these all are provisioning policies that were pulled down from Microsoft. So you'll see in your version policies, 
you see this list of provisioning policies, we're going to pull all of them down and we create a record for each one of them. And here you're allowed to configure Horizon specific settings for each one of those provisioning policies. And so what that means, for example, is if we take the provisioning policy that contains the VMs I'm going to install in this demo, the West US 2 Omnisa provisioning policy, you can select a couple of things. You can select the edit button to change what agent features are going to be installed on the VMs that get onboarded from this provisioning policy. So for example, this provisioning policy contains a set of VMs. So let's say it contains these set of VMs. So here you can see the provisioning policies VMs. When those VMs are on board, because I'm editing this provisioning policies agent features, when those VMs are on board, they're going to be given this set of agent features. Okay, so I don't really need to edit it for now. But one thing that's really important is you select a pool. So when these VMs are on board, what pool do you want these VMs to be onboarded to? And this pool that you select is going to determine which Horizon Edge and which Horizon UAG is going to be used to broker to those VMs. And so, for example, if I had uh, multiple edges and multiple UAGs, I would select uh, whichever pool is using those edges and UAGs. And then, based off of that, would select the edge and UAG used to broker to the VM. So in this case, I only have one edge and UAG in this region. And so, you know, you just got to make sure that this pool I select is tied to an UAG that is in the same network as the VM so that it can actually reach the VM for the brokering process. So you'll notice that this provisioning policy, West US 2 Omniso, has a network connection. Okay, so this is required for the Windows 365 integration because we need our broker, which is deployed in your Azure subscription on your networks. It needs to be able to access this VM. And so you can see here that it's on this network. And when I deployed, when I deployed my Horizon Edge and Horizon UG, it was on the same network. So these networks that I used here when deploying the edge, they're the same network, or at least they have the line of sight to the VMs. And so now when I go to the full group, I click on the full group, I look at the agent features again. I go back to uh, search for the Omniso version policy. I will select the pool that has the edge and UAG on the same or line of sight to those VMs that I'm going to onboard to this pool. So now I've selected the pool for this provisioning policy. So when the VMs come up, they'll be tied to this pool and the brokering will be tied to this pool's edge and UAG. So to look at this pool, for example, you can, uh, it's called West US 2, 1365 pool. If you go to the capacity that this pool was created out of, it's using this capacity. And so this edge and UAG has line of sight to this VM. And at least now we can start the installation process for the Horizon agents. So if I go to the pool groups, and I select entitlement. I can entitle a user or group. Typically, though, you'll be using groups because these provisioning policies are created with groups. And so let's say I want to use, I can entitle this group, right? But I only want to entitle, or I only want to install the Horizon agents on certain VMs inside of this provisioning policy. So I don't want the whole group's VMs to have this Horizon agents. I just want certain VMs. And so I created a group that only contains half the users. Here it is. So I've created a group that creates half the users that are in this version policy. And so now those users as VMs will get the Horizon agent installed. So if I search for that, so the two users are Omnisa 1 and Omnisa 2. And so their cloud PCs will be targets for the Horizon agent installation now that I've saved this. Okay, so I've saved the uh, entitlement and I can go back here and look at the entitlement so I can see what uh, group I entitled. So now I go back to the VMs tab and you'll see that I've created two entries here, one for uh, each user that was in that group. And again, these are the two VMs that I'm targeting, the Omnisa 1 and Omnisa 2. And so it's waiting for the agent to uh, kick off. So at this point, it's uh, going to look for what VMs belong to this user. And at the moment, you, you can only uh, specify which users you want the VMs to be entitled to, or sorry, the VMs to install the Horizon agent for. But 
you can't specify only one VM for that user to get the resignation. If you entitle a user uh, via a group or directly through the user, uh, then all the VMs for that user, all the Windows 365 cloud PCs for that user will receive the rising agent installation. And so that's a requirement. So we'll wait for this to begin onboarding. And once that's done, we'll update here. So you'll see now that one of the VMs has already begun installing and the agent status is still unavailable because it's still installing. But once this agent status becomes available and this Horizon agent status, uh, sorry, and this VM status becomes agent installed, then we will be able to broker to the VM. So we'll keep waiting until this installation finishes. So at this point, we waited a couple of minutes and you'll notice that the agent for one of them has become available now. Uh, but you'll notice that the agent status here is still installing. Uh, that's because we don't process them immediately. We process them in batches. But if you go to the mem portal for this user's VM, you'll see that this user's VM is installed already for the third-party connector. Okay, so at this point, we'll wait for our system to reflect what is on the mem portal or on Azure. Okay, so now that the VMs are both uh, installed, the agent installed on both VMs, and the agent status is available, we can broker. So. I've already launched the VM for this user. So you'll notice the session status is already in ready, but I'll show that again. So you notice here, I logged in as that user, Onisa2, right? And I see the VM here for this user. Now notice that there's a special icon for Windows 365 VMs. So I'll click launch here. Okay, so now I've launched the VM for the user. And um, let me just type in the username and password. So let's go over the reinstall workflow. So you'll notice that this VM is removing because I selected it and I hit reinstall. Uh, and this is just a demo to reinstall. And if you go back to the event portal, we can see for this VM, the second VM, I have submitted a reprovision. And this is just a demo, the reprovision. So at this point, we have two operations ongoing, the reprovision for this second VM and the reinstall for the first VM. And so you can see that the uh, agent one unavailable because we're in the middle of a reinstall. And for the reprovision VM, you'll see that it's going to go to unavailable as well. And once the reprovision is ongoing. So on Microsoft side, the reprovision VM takes a while. So we'll check back in when that's done. Okay, at this point, the VM that's agent is reinstalling is nearly done. It's back to available. And we're now just waiting for us to recognize that this is fully finished. Whereas the VM that's reprovisioning on the mem portal, you can see this user's VM is reprovisioning. It's still not uh, provisioned yet. So you still see the old VM in old status. But once you uh, once it recreates the VM, uh, that's when we uh, notice that this is a newly created VM before the same uh, cloud PC ID. And so you'll see the updates here on the main. And it's still unavailable as expected because the agent is not installed because there's no VM yet. One thing to note that when you reprovision a VM and the agent is installed before you reprovision the VM, once the VM comes back up, the new VM comes up, uh, the Horizon agent installation will be automatically triggered. So there's no need to do anything other than come to the mem portal or the instant sensor and reprovision. And based off of that alone, uh, we should be able to install the Horizon agents and there shouldn't be any need to monitor that status on this portal. Unless of course there's an issue with the onboarding, for example, your networking settings have changed since then that prevent the onboarding to happen, then you can go to the um, VM tab here and search for that either for that user here, uh, or you can search the name. Uh, you can even search the provisioning policy of this VM belongs to uh, to get that. So we'll wait for the reprovisioning to finish. Uh, right now, the VM is still not created. And uh, we'll also wait for the reinstallation to finish for the other VM. Okay, so at this point, the agent is now available for the VM that we reinstall. And for the VM that is reprovisioning, the second one, it's still not uh, available because the VM is still not created. So once this VM gets created, you'll see the new VM name back here. And we're still waiting for it to be created. It takes a while uh, for the reparation. So yep, we'll check back in. Okay, so now that the user's VM has been reinstalled successfully, you can see that the agent is back to being OMNIS installed. And this VM should now be reflected on here. So this user's VM OMNIS 2 has the VM in available status. If I go back to the mem portal, you can see 
the UVM name dy eight jg is reflected here as well. And so at this point, the user can go back to brokering uh, this VM. So at this point, we've covered the agent installation, the reinstallation on this VM, and then the reprovision on the mem portal on this VM. And so we'll cover the uninstallation. So this, you'll notice how that group is uh, given two users who each have a VM. Now, what happens if you entitle multiple groups and there are users who exist in multiple groups, right? We don't make a distinction uh, as to which group the user is entitled to. We just care that the user is entitled transitively at least to one group in order for us to install the horizon agents onto their VM. So if you were to add a group, every user in that group transitively will get the agent installed if they have a VM. Uh, also, if you remove a group, if users in the group that is removed exist still in other groups that are entitled, then no effect is taken until the user is removed entirely from all groups that are in this entitlement. Uh, only then will the uninstallation process begin. So in this case, I will uninstall the single group. And we'll go back to the VM tab, and you'll notice that after a bit, they'll go back into an uninstallation status. So the, the task has been submitted, and now we wait until the uninstallation begins. Uh, it's going to check which users are no longer entitled in any of the groups and uh, uninstall the Verizon agent for them. So you'll notice now actually that it uh, recognize that these two users are no longer entitled. And so it's uninstalling the Verizon agents. So this process takes a bit, but uh, we'll check back in. Okay, so now that the VMs are uninstalled, they are gone from this list. And if we go back to this, we can see that for the users, which I installed, which were Omnisa 1 and Omnisa 2, both of these users now have an empty installed connector. Okay. And at this point, because there's no more VMs inside of this pool, I can go ahead and delete the pool if I want to. And that'll take a few seconds or maybe a minute. In the meantime, I wanted to demo what a failure looks like. Okay, so I have another environment here to display a failure. So you can see one installed successfully, but this other one didn't install successfully. You'll notice that they have different provisioning policies. In this provisioning policy, if I go to the agent features tab, and let me just copy the provisioning policy name, it's called Omnisa East US. If I go to the agent features tab and I search for that policy, I can see that there's no pool selected. And if you look at the VM's error message for this user, I can see a list of error messages. The most important one is at the top, which is onboarding the cloud PC for uh, this is the name, failed because the provisioning policy, here's the name of the provisioning policy, has no Omnisa template associated. So I have to come here and associate the policy. So let me search for it again and then associate the policy to a template. So now that I've associated this policy to a template, I can go back to the VMs. And I'll hit retry. So we'll wait for that to succeed. So in the meantime, let's go back to this pool that we wanted to delete. So let me refresh. And you'll see that the pool is gone now. So I can go to the capacity and delete the provider as well for the offboard workflow. So I'll select the Windows 365 provider. I'll delete it. And I don't need to delete my Horizon Azure provider, Azure Edge. I can leave those around, especially if I have other pools, for example, uh, Azure pools that are associated to it. I don't want to delete that. But now that I've deleted all the Windows 365 pools and Windows 365 providers, I don't have any Windows 365 provider types left here. I can go to the integration tab and off board. 
So I'm disconnected. So one thing to know about this is that we don't have the uh, ability to go into your Azure tenant and delete the service principle from your Azure tenant. So what you need to do is delete it yourself if, if that's what you want. Otherwise, you can leave it there and, and reconnect later on. So that's onboarding. We uh, demoed the onboard workflow, the Horizon Agent installation workflow, the reinstall workflow, the reprovision PC workflow, and then also the delete workflow and the offboard workflow. 